so far, when we've been looking at impulse and momentum, we have kind of been ignoring what's actually happening at the impact itself. So this chapter is all about what is actually happening at that moment of time of impact. So this is between two bodies. When you have relatively large forces and a small interval of time. In this course, we're only doing direct central impact. This means that the velocities of both particles is along the line of impact. It also means that the center of mass of both particles is along the line of impact. So what does this mean? So let's say you have a particle here and a particle here. They're moving along one line and you have a plane of impact here. So these particles are gonna to move towards the plane of impact and come here. This particle is, I should probably denote velocity, so m1, v1 is going this way, m2, v2 is going this way. This particle here is going to come here and everything is perpendicular to the plane of impact. So this would be plane of impact and everything's moving in the same direction. An example of not direct central impact would be, let's say we had a particle coming from here and it moved here and they both, both particles collided, both particles collided at this point, but this yellow particle was coming in at an angle. That is not direct central impact. So we won't be dealing with that in this course. Now, what's actually happening when you have these impacts? So I'm gonna move the screen up. The first thing that's happening is we have no external forces. Because there's no external forces, it means that we have conservation of momentum. And we have conservation of momentum. So in this case, we're only having two particles. That means I can say MAVA plus MBVB is equal to MAVA prime plus MBVB prime. Now, since we already discussed that we only have one line of impact, in this case, we can get rid of the vectors and just deal with scalars because we don't have multiple directions. So I can say MAVA plus MB VB is equal to MAVA prime plus MBVB prime. This will be the first equation that we use to solve these questions. But it, for the most part, this isn't enough information because even if we know the mass and velocity of our first particle and the mass and velocity of our second particle, here we have two unknowns. We would have the second velocity of particle A and the second velocity of particle B. So we need another equation to solve these problems. And so to do this, we actually look at the impact itself. So here I'm gonna move the screen up and I'm gonna draw a picture. So let's say we have, um, we've got particle A here and let's just draw, this is the line that they're moving along. And we've got particle A, here. oh dear. We've got particle A here, and we've got a particle B somewhere over here. Let's say that, and they're both moving in the same direction, so this would be MA, VA, and this would be MB, VB. But let's say the velocity of A is greater than the velocity of B. Eventually, the particle A will hit particle B. 
And in that moment, we don't know if there's deformation, but we'll take the case where there is deformation. So A is hitting B, and they kind of for a second blend into one sort of combined particle. So this is A and this is B. And at the end of that collision, they'll have some new velocity. This would be MA, MB times some velocity U. But then they'll separate and they'll go on their own way and then you would have particle A still moving in this direction and particle B still moving in this direction. So this would be MA, VA prime and MB, VB prime. So let's take a closer look at what's happening here during that collision. And I'll just draw it out for particle A. So for particle A, we have particle A here, and it's moving with its MABA. And as it hits B, particle B is going, well actually they're going to exert an equal and opposite force on each other. But here I'm just going to draw the forces on A. So that means particle A here, and it's kind of getting crushed at this moment, so I'll draw it as a half circle. It's experiencing a force here from particle B, and I'll call that force P dt. And technically, it's not constant over time, which is why we have the integral symbol there. So if we say the linear momentum of particle A plus this impulse, because this here is an impulse, this is linear momentum um, one at the first moment. This will be equal to the linear momentum of particle A at that speed u, so at this moment here. So I'm going to draw this out as is equal to the particle A, but it's now moving at that velocity u of that combined velocity. Then the same particle, and I'll move this up, and sorry, this is still, it's still compressed against, so it's not the full circle, it's that half circle. So then it goes through the period of restitution. So now we have particle A, u, still moving to the right, but now it undergoes that restitution. So this is as the particles separate from each other. The force B is still applying a force on A. So, but now we call this force the integral of R dt. And this is equal to the linear momentum of A V prime, V A prime. So now we have here two linear momentum equations, just like we did in the chapter before, but it's capturing the force. This column here is capturing the force of particle B on particle A. On the top here, this is the actual deformation of particle A due to particle B, and this is the restitution. So if those two forces are equal, it means that particle A is no longer deformed um, when they separate, so it returns to its original size. But we call the ratio of those the coefficient of restitution. And this is E, which is equal to the ratio of the restitution with the um, deformation. Now, we can rewrite these in terms of linear momentum. So we just rearrange the equations of our drawings, and we end up with E is equal to U minus VA prime divided by V minus U. So all I've done is rearrange the equations above. And if we redid these drawings with particle B, we would also end up with an equation that VB prime minus U divided by U minus VB is equal to E. So now here we have two equations that equal E, and we want to get rid of this in-term speed U because it doesn't really provide us anything useful. So we just rearrange these equations to get rid of U 
and you end up with E is equal to VB prime minus VA prime divided by VA minus VB. So this is really saying the difference between the velocities after impact divided by the difference between the velocities before impact gives us the coefficient of restitution. I'm going to move this upwards. So if E is equal to 1, that meant that our integral of r dt was equal to the integral of, um, of p dt. This meant that it was a perfectly elastic impact. It means that the relative velocities before and after are the same. If your E is equal to zero, this means that your integral of restitution was equal to zero. This means that there was no restitution, and so it's perfectly plastic. There's no period of restitution. It means that both particles will stay together after the impact. So essentially you have one particle hitting another particle. During that impact, they combine into one particle. And then after impact, they stay as one particle. There's nothing, there's no forces to separate them again. So if there's no force of restitution, if r dt is equal to zero, there's no, there's no force that actually separates them, so they have to end up staying together. In order to solve impact problems, I'm going to move the screen up again. So solving impact problems. First you do conservation of momentum. And then you do the coefficient of restitution. This gives you two equations to solve two unknowns.